one thing to build a data architecture. It's another to keep it updated every day. And while there are a lot of great tools out there to do a lot of complex orchestrating and monitoring and scheduling, sometimes all you really need is just a simple cron job scheduler to update some data models and keep your data refreshed every day. And so what I want to show you in this video is how you can use some free built in features of tools you're probably already using for version control to make this possible so that you can just get started with your scheduling and only worry about adding on more complicated things until later on. All right, so the example I'm going to show you to start is within a GitHub project. And as I mentioned, we're going to add something that's built in to the functionality of this platform. Again, whether you're using GitHub or something else. And the way that this works in GitHub specifically is you add a .github directory. Now I do have another video that talks specifically about getting started with GitHub Actions. So, so if this is brand new to you and you want some more details, I encourage you to go check that one out. But what you want to do here is then add another subdirectory called workflows. This is going to be a little different in the other platforms, but the general concept is the same. And that's really what I want to show you. Now within here, we have our different uh, workflow files, but the one I want to explain is scheduled prod run. The name of this file isn't as important. It's just whatever you want to call it. What's more important is once we look in the file. And again, the goal here is just keep this as simple as possible. Now in any GitHub actions file, you have a bunch of steps, you have jobs and all this stuff. Again, you can check that out in a different video. But the context of this is it's just running a dbt project. It's running dbt commands right down here to production. And the idea here is we want all this to happen on a schedule. We want this to update every day. Now, in this example, it's commented out. But the way that this would work is you add an on identifier here and then use the schedule attribute. So again, just imagine these comments are gone. And then in within here, you can see we can add a cron schedule. And if you're not familiar with cron, it's really just a way of uh, telling the machine when you want something to be triggered, when you want it to run. And by setting it up here, we can tell GitHub to run this script at a certain cadence. And there's a great link here called crontab.guru. And I'll open this up here. And it basically allows you to create a cron schedule using the different uh, components. You can just use random or you can put something in uh, that you want. And it's going to explain in plain English what that means. So again, if I uh, compare it to what I have here, let's say I just copied this in here, we can see this is going to run at eight o'clock. And you can see the next one would be tomorrow at 8am. And if I click next, then it'll drop down and give me some next one. So I can see again, it's the next day at eight. So for example, I could change this and put one here. So this is going to be on just Mondays, you can see the different Mondays or maybe Tuesdays, and maybe we want this at the 30th minute past the hour. So you can see how you can schedule this however you want. And you would just copy and paste that schedule in here and GitHub is going to understand it. And then whenever it hits that schedule, it's going to run your actions here. Now, this is a very simple script, but sometimes again, that's all you really need. You don't need to get something overly complicated and you can just put it right in here and then it would show up in your actions tab as a schedule. So let me show you some real examples of this that I've implemented here. So here's an example of a daily refresh that a client of mine has running and we were to open this up. You can see the specific commands is the exact same thing, but every day it's just running these commands on a schedule. And I think, and if I look at the workflow file itself, so here in this example, we can see it's running at 10. Here's another example. We can see it's running, taking about two minutes and it's going to be the same thing, but I believe this is just maybe at a different time. But the whole idea here is this is just running once a day. We don't need something overly complicated to just make this possible. And you can do this right within GitHub itself. Now, GitHub's not the only tool you'll use for version control. And there also are some limitations to consider, especially if you're just trying to stay on the free tier. So let's now talk about the other tools as well as those considerations. Hey, so real quick, if you're enjoying this video and you want some more information on modern data tools, modern data engineering, or just the data stack in general, I put together a free starter guide that will help give you some more clarity on a lot of these concepts and walk you through some of the most important topics in this space. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll leave a link below or you can just go to startwithmoderndata.com. But with that out of the way, let's now hop back into this video. All right, so number one, when it comes to GitHub, especially for the free account, there is a limitation on how much you can run. You can't just run unlimited jobs here and get away with it. So with GitHub Actions on the free plan, you get 2000 minutes per month. And so when you think back to these here, for example, each of these are two and a half minutes roughly, and the other one was maybe a little bit less, but that's what you need to keep an eye on for the free tier. But 2000, again, might be all you need. If I open up a calculator here and we just look 2000, let's just say 31 days in a month, I don't know, on average, 64 minutes per day that you can run here. So again, if you just have a very simple project and you're just running it once a day, that's going to get you pretty far. You also need to factor in maybe you have some other CI workflows running that's going to eat into this time. But if you don't have a whole lot else or you have a small team, this is going to get you pretty far. All right. So now let's look at the other examples. For example, GitLab is another popular tool you might be using. 
if you go down here, at least at the time of this recording, it looks like they have 2000 CI pipelines per month as well. In GitHub, they call them actions. So GitHub actions. In GitLab, they're known as pipelines, CI pipelines. Those are basically the same thing. And there are some limitations. And then as you go up, you can get more time, you know, up to the gold plan, it's 50,000 minutes per month. But what we're talking about in this video is just basic daily updates, refreshes of your data models, which probably won't take that long. All right, so now let's look at Bitbucket, which is another tool. They also refer to this as pipelines. And if we go down here, their pricing again is a little bit different. For the free plan, you get 50 minutes per month included. But then once you go to the standard plan, you get 2,500, et cetera. Now, of course, there's more to consider when picking a version control platform other than just these times here. This is just one component, but it is something to think about if you're trying to implement this concept. All right, so this might sound great in theory and you might wanna just get started with it, but let's talk real quick about considerations for implementing this process. So number one, I think this is for a simple architecture where you maybe just are trying to update data models once a day or a few times a day here, you're not doing anything crazy. Maybe you're not trying to put everything together in one tool as an orchestrator, but you just wanna refresh your data models or something like that. You know, if you're just trying to batch update something once or twice a day, this is a good option for you, again, just to get started. And you can do a whole lot with this if you wanted, but really the idea here is to keep it simple and not try to do too much at start. If you're a small team, you just have a few things you wanna update and you're not really concerned with all the bells and whistles of a more robust data orchestrator tool, such as some other ones out there in the market. So again, my goal here was to show you that this is possible and this and it's something that I've implemented with real clients to help them get off the ground and start automating their processes without introducing too much complexity. Hopefully now you can see how you can get your scheduling up and running for free using some tools you might already be using for version control. So thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.